hello everyone i am atik back with the new tutorial today so um, today i'm going to show you how to create an auto deployment using aws aws code commit uh, code deployment and code pipeline so let's start the process so first we need to create an ec2 instance this is a this is a web server where uh, the files will be placed using the uh, using pipeline at the auto deployment so um, I go to the EC2 dashboard where I will create a new instance. So let's create the launch instance. Then I choose Amazon Linux 1. Then I choose T2 Micro. Then I choose uh, by default everything I keep as it is. So just I choose an IAM role. Then I go to add storage. Then I go to add text. This is important because we need to add a tag and then uh, we are going to use that tag in the code deployment. So please uh, watch this carefully. I give a name here that is uh, project uh, my blog. That is my domain. You can put any key value here as a tag. So uh, everything is allowed. But keep in mind that these tags will be used in the code deployment uh, process so whatever you use here please keep remember that it will be used in later on so uh, if I have added enough tags then we go to the next security groups so I just choose create a new one I just need my IP. then I as well that is on everyone okay I always put a description in future you you might need that to understand why you have uh, given access to that so let's say this is public HTML. and launch and then launch so I choose media that I already have and then uh, launch <coughs> in my other videos I have shown you how to create a key pair so I will not show you this uh, again so let's assume that you have already know how to set up a key pair in local I give a name So uh, my EC2 instance is uh, creating. So uh, while it's creating, let's go to uh, code commit where I will uh, create a Git repository. So let's go to code commit. Code commit is like uh, GitHub, but it's managed by AWS. So uh, it's inside AWS, and uh, you can. Uh, put your uh, uh, codes projects into code commit as a git repository service so i'll give you the name that's fine and then Okay, I have created a code commit repository. Uh, now I'm going to uh, copy the repository in my local and put some files. So let's clone the URL. And uh, let's clone it in my local. <coughs> okay, I need a git username and password. So I already have. Uh, user so let's create a temporary user and password for him that's created so let's use that ok 
okay i have now copied in uh, <coughs> git repository so let's see inside <coughs> yeah it's created so let's uh, open my visual studio code so i see here there's no files here it's an empty repository so let's uh, put some files first i need to put an uh, app spec.yml file so it's app that's one then another file is uh, let's say index.html <coughs> okay. so this is the appspec.yml file this is used for uh, deploying your files into production server so it specify where you wanted to uh, put your files in the uh, in the server so let's i have uh, used previously used in other projects so i just copy that here i will post it in my description how to use this so uh, this is a way yaml file so it says that it's version os files files is your source files and then uh, source everything inside slash will be put into the var www.html and uh, for permissions i use ec2 users and group www okay so um let's save it then index.html i put some comments here okay uh, great so i just created a simple html file um, it's very simple it just has a title and a body with a small h1 so let's save it then my app spec.yml file that's been done so let's uh, commit this into that so let's try again yeah the files are there so uh, let's do it again push okay i pushed the files to the uh, repository okay let's use my screen let's uh, give it again Okay, give my username and then give password. Okay, um, so looks probably this has been done to the master branch. Yeah, that's done. So my files has been put into uh, the format repository. Let's review here. Okay, I have my files here. So uh, let's now go to the EC2 instance where it is running. Uh, at this moment, there is uh, uh, nothing there, so I uh, I need to install Apache Web Server there. So let's try to do that. New tab. Then I connect to SSH. Mm -hmm. 
See if I can connect to the instance. Yes, I want to continue. Okay. So uh, now uh, I have logged into my EC2 instance. I need to install everything. Uh, let's. I have copied the instructions here. I will put that in the comment section as well. So let's run these commands. This is basically using uh, installing PHP and uh, Apache. It takes some time, one or two minutes. So um, let's wait while it's installing. Okay, done. Then uh, let me clear the logs. So I go to next. I'm gonna install Apache and PHP. So let's do that. Then I will do something, some more steps here. By the way, you can do this while you create the instance as well. I have uh, I am now doing that from here. I just start the HTTP server. Server started. Then usually I put the server on. Uh, start while the server is apache server starting on server reboot so that's um, done then i add a group here especially dot 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 for the web server then i add a user group uh, ec2 user to dot 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 Then I add Apache user, which is default from uh, HTTP server. Then I put some file permissions here. Okay, then I need to uh, install Ruby. This is specially required for the deployment agent. Need to install WGET if it's not there. Probably it should be there. Okay. Then we need to run this command. This will download the code deployment agent. This is important because uh, most of the things others that is you have you should have done that. But here this is something different that is requires to do that for uh, installing code deployment agent. This ensures that your instance is linked to code deployment. So that's done. Now I'm going. I have downloaded the code deployment agent and then I'm going to put that uh, permissions to executable. Then I'm going to uh, run that install file for the deployment agent. Okay, it's installing for deployment agent, and let's see if we have started it. So now I'm going to start the code deployment agent. Okay. So uh, I cleared the log files. So now I'm going to check if, if it's running or not. So I check the status here. Still, yeah, so 
so my code deployed and agent is running so let's now go to aws console and go to code deployment okay now we're going to create a code deployment application I give the application name and then I put the platform here. You see, it's easy to on premise. There are some other options as well. I'm not going to discuss those. So let's assume we are going to only do for EC2. Okay, uh, then uh, I have created the code deployment applications. Now I'm just creating a code deployment group. You can add multiple groups. So uh, I usually create two groups, one for Dave and one for master. So let's create the master one because we have master branch here. So uh, service role. I need to create a service role here. So uh, let's go to IAM. I'm going, to, I'm going to go to roles then create a role. So I'm going to get a role for code deploy. Next permissions. This is code deployment role. Instance. this good deployment role okay create the role I've created the role so now if I uh, see this I now try to create the group um, you should see my created role yeah that's great. So um, now I give the name. It's the master. This is because it's linked to master branch. If it's linked to dev branch, I put that name in dev. Then I give the instance. This is important. Please uh, note this carefully. We are now going to link to an EC2 instance and say the tags that we have created. Project my blog. And then we have sites and shops. So this is important. The, the key that you have used in the EC2 instances that should be given here. And using that key pair, the AWS code deployment agent will uh, deploy your uh, codes to that corresponding EC2 instances. Here it says one unique matched instance, and if there is multiple matching, then you need to check that carefully then uh, I don't want to have a load balancer now we can discuss later and then we can uh, this is just an additional steps you can do or you can skip I create triggers because uh, deployment fails. so if for any reason deployment failed I should be notified so let's deployment fail and then um, I create a SMS topic there is no topic here so let's let me create a SMS topic just a moment Okay. 
that's a good little dot thing. Subscription. So I have to give the subscription. Now if I try to create the trigger, let's see, it's not there. Okay, uh, I can do that later on. Let me just save it. Visible rollbacks. I will check this off. You should be able to roll back in the different phase. You should be able to roll back. Okay, create different group. Deployment group created, master, triggers, there is no triggers, there is no alarms, I need to create the trigger, so uh, let's edit now. In the advance, we are going to add a trigger with a deployment phase. My topic is there, so deployment failed, and the event is fails. That's nice. I need to be notified if there is any uh, failure because it's important. So uh, now there is a trigger if there is deployment fail, and I'm going to show you if there is what happens if the deployment fails. Let's save it. Okay, so we have created code deployment application and code deployment group. Now my last part is code pipeline. So go to pipelines. This is uh, pretty simple. You just link to your Git repository to your deployment. So I just put my name. I need to create a role here. This is for first time you need to create those roles, but the for next times you just need to. Uh, the existing ones at this moment i don't have any so just use create a new one and then i uh, default vocation s3 buckets okay fine then um, i go to next source my source is code commit that is uh, my git repository but you can use github as well that's up to you then repository name choose the repository name that you created then at the branch name I can choose master but if you have multiple deployments then you can use uh, different branches okay let's use uh, detection options cloudwatch events recommended this means if you do any push to master branch then it will be deployment it will be triggered the code pipeline and you will deploy your codes to, to your development server or production server so I choose I prefer to use this so let's create build I skip building at this moment I don't need that then the deployment which agent will deploy so let's choose code deploy agent deploy. then uh, I need to choose the applications that I have created in my previous steps so that's here and then it goes to here I go to the next okay now my pipeline has been created and as you can see immediately you see there has been a uh, pipeline is showing here it says that my source is a git uh, code commit re git repository this is my source there has been a uh, there has been some changes here and this is my last change so that is now they are pushing to code deployment agent and code deployment agent will push that to our EC2 instance so let's see what is the status here if it fails it will give an error here if it succeeds 
it will give an uh, success message here. It takes some time, so please be patient. Uh, maybe one or two minutes. And in some cases, if you have a lot of big applications, then it takes time. Wow, it's done. So it's a green signal. That means it has been done. It has been deployed. So let's go to our EC2 and see what has been done. Keep in mind that we have created an app specs file. Uh, which says that the destination should be var dub 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 html so you go to that directory cd var dub 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 html ls great we have seen our files so let's go to uh, Let's go to a website here, see what happens here. Yes, I can see my files. Hello everyone. So as you can see, this is I have uh, actually put in my uh, index.html file and then that's, that's showing here. So let's do some change. We have just created an auto deployment okay let's save it and we have modified that so let's Passwords. You can save it, but uh, for uh, the git config, but I'm not going to do that because I will delete this user. The material has been finished, so this is just an uh, annoying thing, but probably it's not going to be a problem. Okay, my change, my I pushed my change to Git. Then see I in the pipeline. Okay, here you can see just now there is a new, new commit here, so it's updated and it is now pushing the commits to my EC2 instance using code deployment. So it should take around one or two minutes. Tomatory. Have a tea or coffee and then come back again to see that the tier changes has been moved to the server without being any kind of involvement. Great. So now let's see my log. And as you can see, it's been updated. So uh, this is really important for for uh, working in a team where there's multiple programmers, uh, system admins, DevOps engineers who are working there, and you, you have created an automated pipeline so that if anyone pushes their codes to a particular branch and then it's deployed to the environment without having uh, any manual intervention. So that's really important and uh, it, it, it really helps if you are working on a team with multiple programmers, designers, front-end developers, back-end developers. So I hope this tutorial helps you. This is very for beginners. There are some lot of things that you can do in the app specs of YAML file, especially if you wanted to run some uh, shell scripts after deployment, you can do that by modifying the app aspect of YAML file. So there are some options over there to do this. So I hope uh, that I will cover in my next future videos. So thank you for watching. Bye.